Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and I am here at the Bay Area Maker Fair here in San Mateo, California. I'm attending the event with Matter Hackers. They're one of the largest distributors for Ultimaker 3D printers, and one of my personal favorite printers that I've used all the way from their very first version all the way to their current version, which is the Ultimaker 3. Now behind me, I have an Ultimaker 3 on display right now, printing out these carabiners. It's just one material that it's using with one nozzle, but what this printer is really capable of that makes it pretty extraordinary is that it's capable of not only dual extrusion, but it has a little proprietary mechanism that moves the nozzles up and down so they do not interfere with the print. And we're going to show you that in this video. But first, let's go ahead and pull one out of the box and see what it looks like when you receive one. All right, so when you receive a printer, this is the box that it's going to come in. If it's the extended version, it might be a little bit taller box. But let's go ahead and open up, see what it looks like inside. All right, so right on top, you have the accessories box right here. They also include a little test print. You can pull out here to show what this printer actually printed. That way they can test and calibrate all these and ensure that what you get actually does, in fact, work. You also get a roll of filament. Actually, you get two rolls of filament. This is PLA, pretty common plastic, but this is the money. This is the PVA. This is the dissolvable filament that really makes this printer capable of printing very complex shapes that otherwise it wouldn't be able to print or would be nearly impossible to clean up. All right, of course, you get a power cable. It's a standard power cable type that you'd see on any kind of PC. And let's see what's inside of the accessories box. Ooh, nice. You get a quick start guide. Look at this. Tells you everything you need to know to put the printer together. Now, this is important. This is what you need to calibrate the printer. Now, out of the box, my printer was calibrated, but if it ever gets out of calibration, you can use these instructions instructions to basically calibrate the printer back so that the nozzles are right where they need to be. And of course we have the glass build platform. This is borosilicate glass. It's a very, very strong glass that can handle really high temperatures. Now these are really cool. These are the print heads. Normally you just change the nozzle on a machine, but Ultimaker went ahead and created a new design that has a chip that tells the printer exactly what this nozzle is and what's it for. This one right here, this specific one, AA, is a 0.4 millimeter nozzle that can be used for PLA or ABS or any other of the standard materials but they also include this as a BB module. This is a nozzle that's been directly engineered for the PVA filament. This one gives you the best chance of extruding the PVA correctly. You also get this little guy right here. It's just a little tool that they include so that you can adjust some of the crazy little star bits on the machine. All right, so it looks like we have an ethernet cable, so you can also connect the machine wirelessly, which is a really cool feature. All right, it also comes with some of the uni lube. Now, this isn't the type of lube that you'd want to use for your extracurricular activities. Now, this is the thing that makes this printer special over the previous version. You notice that the, the spool holder here has a wire hanging out of it. That's for an NFC, or near field communication device, that the spools from Ultimaker are able to tell the machine what material they are, so that you don't have to go in and figure it out. Cura will automatically adjust for whatever material you put onto the spool. It also comes with a a little thumb drive from verbatim. This machine works with USB thumb drives. It doesn't use the SD cards uh, like the old machines do. They're trying to move to something that's a little bit more standardized so you can plug hard drives and other things into it and not just memory cards. Then you have the glue stick. Everybody loves the glue stick. Me personally, I prefer extra hold hairspray when I'm affixing my models, but this is the traditional method that most printers have been using for a long time. Yeah, we're not even going to go into what this is for. Now, the last thing we have in the box, of course, is the power supply for the unit. You can see this is a massive power supply. This one right here is rated at 9.2 amps at 24 volts for 221 watts of power. Now this printer uses a little bit more power than some of them because you are driving two heaters on the nozzles and the heated bed all simultaneously. It's time to get to the money. There she is. That is the Ultimaker 3 in all of her glory. All right, let's get her out of the box. Yeah, she's a looker. She even has LED lights when you fire up, which we'll see here in just a few minutes. Now, one of the things I like is that they already have the Bowden tubes attached. The old printers, when you receive them, you had to attach the Bowden tubes yourself. So I think that that's really nice. But you will notice there are blue zip ties holding both of the axes, and you also have a piece of tape holding the build platform down here at the bottom. You have to remove all of that stuff. If you fire this machine up with all that stuff in place, it's just going to make some really bad clickety-clack noises. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the tape from the build platform here, and I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the screw in the back to lift the build platform up just a little bit so that I can pull the bubble packing out from underneath it. All right, so this opens up and you have two different hot ends that you can put in there and it comes preloaded with another double a 0.4 millimeter nozzle the reason being is a lot of people want to print in both two different colors of pla or two different colors of another material and this allows you to do it you only need the bb type nozzle when you're printing the pva which is the dissolvable filament all right so to pull out the hot ends you just pinch up here at the top and pull them out they're a cartridge system and to load the new one and then you just line her up 
and push it in until it pops, and that's it. All right, so the last thing we need to do is install the spool holder. Now, this just pops into place, but we have to do something with this cable. Now, you'll probably be looking around for places to plug it in on the back, but the truth is you plug it in on the bottom. You come underneath here, and the port is right here on the side. Now it's plugged in. There's even a notch in the bottom to run the cable underneath, and they even give you a little shield shroud that you can pop into place right there, and then the last thing you do is put the spool clamp on there so that it keeps the spools from coming off the machine and guides the filament to each of the two feeders. Now this machine has a removable borosilicate glass plate like we talked about earlier. It's held in place with just two little metal clamps. You pop it in the machine, it makes it really easy for you to remove it if you're having a hard time getting a print off the surface and you need to soak it in like a bathtub or water to loosen it up. I really like that feature. You can also buy additional glass plates for quick swaps. All right, so here we have an Ultimaker 3 completely set up and currently it's printing this carabiner, which is just one material, but what really makes this machine fascinating is how it can use multiple materials to print. Now this right here is an engine block, it's specifically a forward engine block, and the PVA is being used to support the internal structure of the block. Once it's done printing, you can basically put it in warm water, even speed up the process with circulating warm water, and it'll dissolve away the PVA, only leaving the final engine block. Another thing I really like about the Ultimaker 3 is how quiet it is. You could run this on your bed stand and most people wouldn't even really notice it. It's almost just a very quiet white noise and compared to the old 3D printers that didn't have the dampened stepper motors, it was super loud. It sounded like R2-D2 doing stuff in a broom closet. Now the removable print head design like I was talking about makes it very easy for you to pull the cartridges out and reinstall a new cartridge for changing your filament type. No more having to unscrew the nozzles, wait for them to cool down and put them back in, which I think is nice if you're constantly changing the configuration of the printer for different types of printing like the dual color for instance you know let's say you need to print some dentures for yourself or your grandma you could you could print them out on this thing using two different colors of ABS or PLA or even nylon it's there's a lot of different material choices that you can use on these FDM style 3d printers so guys there are a lot of great 3d printers on the market and this is certainly one of them the Ultimaker 3 it has a lot of cool unique features like the removable hot ends and the ability to have the NFC tell the machine what material you're putting in it or if you're more of an advanced user and you want to use aftermarket filaments you can certainly do that too. Now the application support for the printer is really cool. You both have the handheld app and Cura on the desktop with a multitude of features, but you can also use it with any other software like Simplify 3D for instance. There are a lot of options with this 3D printer. It gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of repeatability, which is what most people from beginner all the way to advanced are looking for in a 3D printer. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments or come over on Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles and I'd be happy to answer them. This is a printer that I own myself. I also own the Ultimaker 2 Plus the Ultimaker 2 and the original Ultimaker made out of plywood. It's cool to see the genesis of this printer and how far it's come along. And I can't wait to see what Ultimaker does in the future. And I'd also like to thank Matter Hackers here for inviting us out to the event. This is Maker Fair in Bay Area. It's been an absolute blast. And I am happy to be here. And I hope they invite me again back next year. All right, guys, take it easy. And until next time, keep on 3D printing. And screw that Joel Telling guy. Screw him. That, that 3D, 3D printer nerd, he sees nothing. I'm coming for you, 3D print nerd. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. Hey, what's going on, R2? What's going on? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Really? What do you think of that Joel Telling 3D printer nerd guy? Yeah, that's what I think about him, too.